Good morning, folks. Welcome to Connect Church today. It's great to uh, great to have you here with us. Welcome if you are visiting us for the first time. It's great to it's great to have you here. We are officially kind of in holiday season now, where we always seem to have a few a few visitors e- each week uh, coming and joining the delights of Cornwall. I've got a few uh, just announcements and notices uh, to get through before we have our our time of worship uh, together. So it's slightly quieter here today. We have some of the chaps away at uh, CVM, Christian Voice for Men. Uh, Arthur's taken a small group up there. Some of our young people are away at Spree up in Exeter, so it's a little bit quieter on that front. It's definitely been quieter in our house over this weekend, which which has been refreshing. Um, next weekend is the men's breakfast. Uh, speak to Arthur if you want to uh, sign up for that. For those that are not on the email, uh, we have uh, some printed copies of the AGM reports at the back there on the top of the stairs for the 4th of July. Uh, last week I mentioned serving on teams during my message. So if you want to get involved in the life of the church uh, and have some availability to come and serve in the life uh, of the church and on a team, come and speak uh, to myself afterwards. Uh, that would be great. And a uh, a, an announcement for the coming uh, w- next month even. We have on the 16th of July connecting with each other Sunday. We're going to be down the beach in the afternoon between 4 uh, and 6 o'clock. It's a bring your own barbecue or bring your own tea. I'm hoping that the weather is going to be nice like it has been the last uh, few days and uh, just enjoy uh, some time with each other. So we are here this morning to, to worship Jesus. That is first and foremost uh, what we are here to do. Uh, So I want to invite you right from the get-go to come with uh, anticipation for what God is going to do this morning amongst us. Graham is going to be sharing later and continuing our series on um, the Old Testament names of God. So we're looking forward to what Graham is going to bring. Shall we just uh, stand together? Let's just uh, take a moment, shall we, just to focus ourselves after this week that we've had. Our first uh, song says this in the chorus, To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. Let's just uh, take a moment to realign our hearts, shall we? Let's just make him our one desire this morning. Lord Jesus, we want to welcome you with our praise this morning in this place, don't we, church? We do. We want to welcome you with our praise. We say, come and have your way amongst us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We say, come and have your way this morning. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. sing that chorus together to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one desire you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down Let our praise be a welcome, let our songs be a sign, we are here for you, we are here for you, let your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are worthy. Only you are worthy. God, to fire for 
down. Let our shouts, let our shouts be your anthem, your renown. Fill the skies, we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome to this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcome to this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome to this place. Why don't you just take a moment where you are just to welcome him. Just say you are welcome here today, Lord. You are so welcome in this place. We welcome you with our praise. We welcome you with our songs, Lord. Welcome you, Jesus. Come and have your way this day. Come and have your way. It's grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountains I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? Who could imagine such great mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages. Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation. 
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Let's just spend a moment on those couple of words. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Folks, I want to remind us this morning that the cross has spoken. Jesus Christ has, was crucified. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. And we can come as sons, we can come as daughters into the presence of the King of Kings because of what Jesus has done. So let's sing hallelujah. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. thousand generations falling down in worship 
to sing a song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy. Holy forever. greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all your name your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy for King of kings, holy, you will always be holy, holy forever. You will always be holy, holy forever. You will. Yeah, Father, we want to join with heaven this morning, declaring holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. 
We ask that you would come and fill this place with your glory this morning. Come and be glorified. Lord, your word says that we can boldly approach your throne of grace as sons and daughters. So we ask that you would reveal your glory to us this morning. We ask boldly that you would show us your glory. Reveal a greater depth of how glorious you are. Shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall and my sorrow he made them his very own and bore the burden of Calvary and suffered Shall ever 
crowned with the ransomed in glory. His face I at last shall see. It will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. And Lord, we, we stand amazed. We stand in awe of who you are. We stand in awe of what you've done. And Lord, we thank you that you are still at work. Through the power of your word, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you are still transforming lives today that you are taking broken, fragile people and restoring them step by step to be more and more like you, Jesus. And we thank you that we are those people that you have rescued, that you paid the ultimate price for. We thank you for your love your amazing love, and we thank you for your grace shown to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, folks, children, it is that time. We are going to send you down to your groups. Pray the Lord's blessing upon you this morning as you go down. Enjoy yourselves, have fun. Graham, do you want to come up and we'll just pray for you? Folks, let's just pray for Graham this morning as he brings God's word to us. We prayed for him last week and we're going to pray for him again this morning. Lord, we thank you. Uh, for the, uh, the message that you've laid on Graham's heart this morning, Lord, as he shares, as he opens your scriptures to us, uh, as we understand a bit more of your character of the God who heals. Lord, we pray that as Graham shares, Lord, that faith would arise in this room, that faith would even arise right now in this room in Jesus' name. Because you are the God who heals. You are the God who sets people free. You are the God who calls us into that wonderful relationship with yourself. And you don't want to leave us where we are or where we were. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. It's lovely to see you, and hopefully you can hear me. Have you got me? Is it coming? Yes, here we are. Good morning. Lovely to see you. The, that song, Holy Forever, I've never heard that before. It's a beautiful song, and it caused my heart to soar a bit. And uh, I, the last song we sang, 
I remember Patrick singing with full voice and full gusto uh, something between 15 and 20 years ago. And there was clearly this passionate love of God within him. And, and that's what I'm longing for us to, uh, to have in clear focus today. I've, I've got something slightly different for you today. There's a mixture, both of teaching and testimony. And my heart is, my longing is, that in the combination of those, there'll be a resetting of mindsets and worldviews. As time goes on, we can get uh, disappointed, we can, get just, uh, we can just breathe quietly uh, the world's ways, the world's uh, way of looking at things, and the limitations that quietly encroach over who God is can be subtle but powerful. And my longing is today that, that with, with this stuff, There'll be a reset, it'll be a sort of wake up, a break out of, of sort of cloudy things and, let the, and letting the sunlight of God's power and love show in. Now, um, that's the plan, that's my longing. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how we do. <laughs> um, before launching into this, I want to say that there are many ways that God heals. And we're looking today at Jehovah Rapha, which means uh, Rapha, which means God heals. And there isn't a conflict between what the medical profession do and the healing that God brings. Just over a month ago, I had severe abdominal pain. I was admitted to hospital with diverticulitis and a small perforation in the bowel, which caused a significant infection. I was treated with intravenous antibiotics for five days and pain relief and ultimately I was out of pain and allowed to return home. Many people prayed for me during that time and I was filled with his peace. Had a few pretty good conversations with some of the people there as well. But I believe that I was healed both sovereignly and by the treatment I received from the doctors. So it's good to remember that God gave the doctors and nurses their skills whether or not they recognise it. I've understood for a long time that God heals, but I was surprised to learn the context of where the Hebrew Jehovah Rapha actually comes from. I'm the God who heals is what that means. The Israelites had just been pinned against the Red Sea by the approaching Egyptian army. God had delivered them by the miraculous parting of the waters, enabling them, but not the Egyptians, to cross the Red Sea. We pick up the story at this point. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur, for three days they travelled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara, which means bitter. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees and they camped there near the water. Note, they must have been pretty desperate. A large number of people, men, women and, ch and children, journeying three days into the desert with no water. Imagine how they felt when they found water at Mara. 
They must have been delighted when they saw it. But think how it must have been when after all that time they discovered that they couldn't drink it. The people cried out to the Moses who cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a, tree, a piece of wood. Well, we don't have James uh, who was working with Southwest Water here uh, amongst us at the moment, he's downstairs, but I think that's a fairly unconventional method of water treatment. But there we are, the Lord showed him this piece of wood and, the, and uh, it became, the waters became sweet and drinkable. The Lord had taken them through the waters of the Red Sea and he was testing them, showing them that he really was and is the Lord of all and able to provide for them, whatever the circumstances look like. I wonder if you've been desperate for something to happen and it's not happened. What do you do then? Do you grumble and complain? Or do you remind yourself of God's promises and faithfulness that he's d and rehearse what he has done in the past? That was the test here. Uh, Moses had taken them through water, showing God's lordship and supremacy over the natural world. And then there they were at bitter water. Don't be fooled that there are things that God cannot sort out. There really aren't. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Please note, the partnership of listening carefully to God and doing what is right in his eyes went alongside God's promise not to bring on the Israelites any of the diseases he brought out, he brought on the Egyptians. I expect the Israelites would have been badly dehydrated. But the thing that made the difference to them was the changing of bitter water into water they could drink. It enabled them to carry on rather than die in the desert. Sometimes healing is brought about by a significant change in circumstances. It doesn't look like a physical healing, but enables growth and life and change. Maybe, uh, I think my own thinking of healing was a bit too limited in that. It, enc it encompasses those things. So, from that passage, obey the Lord, call out to him, remind yourself of God's faithfulness, and hold on to his character. Now, there can be physical healing as well, and I want to tell you a little story about that. About 20 years ago, I was at the top of the ladder in our garden pulling ivy off the church building when I overstretched and fell about 12 feet. Incidentally, did you know that most falls over 12 feet are fatal? I broke my radius and my ulna and there was a two inch gap between my radius and my humerus. Uh, I was taken immediately to hospital and was operated on that day. At 10 o'clock the following day, which was a Sunday, I had another operation. And by the way, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning is a great time for a vicar to have an operation. <laughs> uh, and that involved quite a number of pins and plates. There was a long recovery time involving a number of different plaster casts and then an even longer time of physiotherapy. And at the end of that time, I was really grateful that I could move all my fingers and that I had feeling in the whole of my arm, but I couldn't straighten my arm any more than that. I had years, uh, uh, four years went by, and I, I was like that, four years. 
Four years after that event, I went to a New Wine Leaders Conference in Harrogate, and the person leading the meeting said that he wanted to pray for people who had historic injuries. And he asked people to put their hands up. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got people either side of those standing to, put, uh, to pray for them. And at the time, I didn't feel anything. But from a few hours afterwards, my arm really started hurting. And it went on for ages. And to be honest, I was angry with God. I'd gone through all this, and I'd, uh, uh, eventually it had stopped hurting. And now, after being prayed for for healing, it was hurting again, like mad. When the conference ended, I drove the nearly 300 miles back to Bournemouth, still in pain. And I, when I got home, I thought to myself, well, what has happened? I know, I'll do the acid test. And the acid test about the amount of flexion you have in your elbow is this. You lie down on the ground, shoulders on the ground, and I put my elbow down as far as it would go. And my wrist hit the carpet. And I think, wow. Now, what's, what, how does that work? Four years, like that. <laughs> Lit, honestly, wasn't it? Four years. <laughs> and then, this guy says, I want to pray for people with historic injuries. Huh? <laughs> and hurting like mad. And then, the Lord has kindly given me that movement back. Four years. Well, he could have stopped me falling off the ladder, for example. <laughs> could have been a couple of angels saying, get down! <laughs> well, it's a mystery. It really is a mystery. But, interestingly, uh, I, was, I was delighted at this. It was wonderful. The next day, in the evening, I happened to be leading a service uh, with a number of churches joining us, and I felt it was right to tell that story and show them my arm. So I, you know, I did the thing, I laid down, I showed them, I said, it's amazing. And I said, is there anybody here with historic injuries? And a few people stood up, and one of them was a student, and he'd broken his thumb, it was painful. And I said, well, okay, well, uh, everyone, pray for those that are, that are around this guy. And he got prayed for. And I'll never forget his reaction. He went, <laughs> he was both shocked and delighted. Do you like that, shock and delight? Do you want to do that shock and delight to one another? <laughs> and he said, nothing like this ever happens to me. And God healed him. Now, I don't know whether there were heart conditions in that group that, that evening. I don't know why God did that, whether that was going to lead to other things in his life, what God was doing, but God sovereignly healed that guy's thumb. It was completely unambiguous that God touched him. I expect he told his friends. Many mysteries in all this. But I'm left with the truth that God does heal and that it's right to ask him. So often we can just ask for a bit and then give up. Well, is that really the character of God? We don't understand it all. It's interesting, just this morning, a and I were reading that Paul left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Paul, the amazing apostle, left Trophimus sick. It's clear he doesn't heal all the time. But I suspect he wants to heal more than we think. Uh, in terms of healing, it would be helpful to have a quick look at views of eschatology and the breaking in of the kingdom of God. 
Right. Now then, this is meant to be a slowly revealing slide, and unfortunately, uh, it's not slowly revealing, so I'm going to have to explain <laughs> it to you. <laughs> yeah, with, with, it, you know, it, it, it builds nicely on, on my presentation, but doesn't do that this. So, here we have two simple lines, the Earth timeline and then the Heaven timeline. And then, from, uh, um, after a while, you have the birth of Jesus breaking into the Earth timeline, his death and resurrection, and then later on, Pentecost coming down, the breaking in of the Kingdom of Heaven, and over the years, we've seen a number of revivals breaking in. Ultimately, Jesus will come again, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. That's where the earth timeline goes, and it's just one timeline from then on. Now, there are some wrong views of eschatology. Some people think, like the red one, unrealized eschatology. There's no breaking in of the kingdom of God until the kingdom comes finally and fully when Jesus comes again. And I would say, I'm sorry, but that's not what the Bible says. There are, uh, and there are some people who say, no, the, Jesus has come, everything is available. There is no suffering, it's just You've got to, got to pray, and if, you, and if you're not healed, it's not, you're not enough, there's not enough faith. And that's wrong too. It's not you get everything now. The kingdom has come, is coming, and will come. So I want to say we're in this time of inaugural eschatology. The kingdom of God has come and will increase as time goes on. So that way, you can hold in tension this thing, well, not everyone is, is healed, but God loves us and wants to heal. It's not nothing happens. It's not everything happens. It's let's be on the lookout and let's be active in pursuing his kingdom. In Isaiah chapter 9, it says, Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. For those that are mathematicians, this is an exponential. There's a, of the increase of his government, there will be no end. It's going, whoop, it's getting steeper. Do you like that? Andrew, you, you got that. <laughs> Maths, I can see it. <laughs> um, in his kingdom, there is no sickness or disease, and his rule and reign is going to continually expand. I mean, that's just worth just thinking about for a little bit. Just ponder the savour, the beauty, and the wonder of that. And all who know the Lord, you're heading for that place. Right. Now, you think that's been uh, a little bit of theology. What I want, I'm going to do another bit of theology with you. We're going to go on a rapid theological journey. So put your theological seatbelts on. Are you ready? We're going to start easy. I'm going to go whoosh. Are you ready? Right. We're going to start easy. S simple. Jesus announced the kingdom of God and went about healing every sickness and disease. Note, in the Greek, the word every means every. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease. Got that one? There we go. Um, he taught his disciples to do the same. So first Jesus, then the disciples. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of God is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Question, would Jesus tell, uh, ask people to do things that are impossible?
he told the 72 appointed, that he appointed to do the same. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers out into his harvest field. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. That wasn't just for the disciples. It carried on with the apostles, Peter and John at Gate Beautiful. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. I want to ask, still got your seat seat belts on? Ready? Yeah. I want to ask you, how do you think that Jesus healed people? How did he do the miracles he did? How many people here think that's easy? He did it because he was the son of God. How many think that? One, two, three, and a half, four, four and a half, five. Well, it is true. Jesus is the Son of God. You'd be glad I'm actually saying that. (laughs) But remember, Jesus emptied himself of his divine privileges. Philippians 2. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So he emptied himself of all his glory and majesty, He laid aside his privileges. He emptied himself of all his advantages over us. He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. If his God nature was still evident, then he wasn't tempted in all points as we are. The completeness of his humanity was such that he had no advantages in his humanity beyond that which we have. Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. So Jesus was suggesting that there was to be a power available to us equivalent to that which was available to him to do the works of God. When the apostles were sent out, the Holy Spirit came to empower them for that specific work. But later, the Holy Spirit was generally available to all. The church is empowered by the Spirit to do the works of the kingdom. Jesus needed the power of the Spirit being a man, and miracles were not done by the power of the second person of the Trinity, either Son of God, but by the third, anointed by the Spirit. There's a distinction between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Spirit came sporadically, particular occasions, particular people, and in the New Testament, there's increasing outpouring. So this is a sea change from the idea Jesus can do what he likes because he was the son of God. Actually, that's not biblical. If Jesus simply healed because he was the son of God, then these two verses don't really make sense. First one, one day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. 
why would they say that if, it was, if, if that was universal, if that was always there? And the second one, he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Again, uh, if it's all because of him being the son of God, why would that be an issue? John chapter 10, as the Father has sent me, even so I send, I send you. The ministry of Jesus can be thought of as a model for us. We all have the same resources as him. Now that's, that's, take, that's quite a shift in some people's thinking. We all had the same resources as was available to Jesus in his empty state. I'm not saying that Jesus was not fully God and fully man. He was, absolutely. But he emptied himself of the privileges of that. That makes such a difference. Because if you grasp that, then that will build your faith. Jesus did it, I can do it in his name. I can't do it in my own strength, in my own resources, but walking with him and filled with his spirit, I can say, knee, be healed, or whatever. So few Christians are using the anointing and gifting we have already been given. I was talking to a Christian doctor some years ago, and she said this, I've been praying for healing all wrong. All these years, I've been asking God to heal people, and I've realised that I should have been using the authority he has given me. I've had pain in my shoulder for ages, and since I've been commanding the pain to go, it has. Now, ready for this. God has told you in his word to heal the sick. So, why do you keep asking him to heal them? If he's asked you to heal the sick, why are you keeping asking him? Because he's given you authority in his name. Question. If you started a new job, how long do you think you would keep your job if you kept asking your boss what he asked you to do? I can hear some pennies dropping. Just a thought. So we need to be more forceful, I believe, in the way we pray. In the name of Jesus, arm be healed. Speak directly to the condition. And I hope that that is a model that we can grow in. Yes, Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. So we need to be hearing him which, and, and then speaking that into being. Sometimes healing comes, but it takes a long time where there are little lies that have creeped in about God, do you want to come up? <laughs> uh, 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 cre crept up, thinking he's, he, he no longer wants to touch this, he no longer is able to do this, then I would say, come again, present yourself before God. Whatever the thing is, whether it's you're living with athlete's foot or great trauma or a serious heart condition or whatever it is, come and present yourselves before God and allow him to do his marvellous work. Thank you, uh, Maya.
to, to go to the game. Thank you, Graham. We're just going to uh, just uh, spend some time responding to that. So how we're going to do that this morning is we're just going to sing this song. I'd love you just to listen to the words. If there's something you uh, want to be prayed for this morning in that whole area of healing, I'm just going to ask you just to make your way to, to the front of the church and um, we'll just coordinate a few folks to, just to pray for you. We believe that Jesus Christ does heal today. Let's just step into that place, shall we? So as we uh, start to play this song, I just encourage you just to make your way down. ask a few folks just to come and pray with these folks that are here, maybe Denise and Llewellyn, maybe Debs if you're around, Graham and Sadie, Reuben, would you just come and lay some hands on these folks, if you feel prompted, there's some, uh, there's some anointing oil just on the front on the table up there, just to... Uh, try and just keep the aisles free as well just in case anybody else feels that that stir in a bit just to come forward come lay your burdens come lay your heart in come lay your head There is 
Come lay your heart down. Come lay your head down with me. Come lay your burdens. Come lay your heart down. Come lay your head down with me. Let's really sense the Lord as we were praying for today. Just want to really bring healing to some emotional areas of people's lives. Maybe where you've been hurt. Maybe where you've been uh, wounded by somebody or something historically something that you've just been uh, carrying. The Lord just wanted to bring a real freedom in that area in your life. If you feel that's uh, you, maybe you just want to come down or raise your hand where you are. darkness, my God, that is who you are. We'll make a miracle work, we promise, keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are the way maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you.
working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working we make a miracle work the promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle work the promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 Lord, we want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you that you make a way for each and every one of us to come through the blood of Jesus Christ to restore that relationship between humanity and God. We are so, so thankful. Lord, we pray a blessing on us this morning as we, as we go from this place. Lord, that you'd give us opportunities to pray for people, to stretch out our hands and step out in faith and say, in Jesus' name. We're going to officially finish the service here. Uh, if you want to just stay and linger, we're just going to continue to play for a little bit. Do grab tea and coffee downstairs. We look forward to uh, seeing you uh, next week. God bless.